notable names, qualifying, not qualifying? What, what prelim do you want to talk about first? Let's start with the men's 15. First heat, get that out of the way first here. Engels had a really sneaky move there with 100 to go, getting around Holt there, had to basically shrink himself in half and turn sideways to, to get through there. It was like he was like in a crowded men's room basically and didn't want to touch any walls or anybody, like the way he got through there with 100 to go. Nagus, Alexander, Sieti, Ribic qualify automatically, and then Suleiman and Avila had to wait for heat two. And we said yesterday, death heat was in heat two. Yep. And that's exactly, and that's exactly uh, how it played out. Now, heat two didn't do themselves any favor, Gordon, because what did they go out at in heat two? 207. You knew after, yeah, you knew after a lap, you, you said to me, they're only getting five. They're only getting five in this heat. And before we focus on the people up front, the first person you noticed falling off was high schooler Hobbs Kessler. Yeah. Uh, he said in his post-race interview that he kind of went to the straight to the back because, you know, he thought that maybe he was just thinking he wanted to be more conservative, not get boxed in. So he wanted to kind of make sure he had room to make a move when he needed to. But then yeah. with the, such a slow pace and being in the back and the ramp up of speed in the final 700 or 600 meters, he wasn't able just to close that gap because – when you're that far back and a move is made up front, it yeah. takes time for you to see the move. Like it's like traffic, right? Once the first car goes, even if you're five cars back, you don't get to go until you know five seconds after. And I think that could done him in if he would have been more up front with like in the top three or four. When Central makes a move or whoever made the move, you're ready to go right away. But in this situation, I mean, he's young, right? It's literally a high schooler. Um, he it, he's shown that he can. He's shown that he has the talent. I think it's just you need to, you need to get your feet wet. You need to you need to get knocked around. You need to get knocked out in a second round to learn how to be prepared and become, you know, a dominant type talent. I mean, I think Central probably got knocked out. I mean, Central was probably running four ten in high school, but not, mm -hmm. I don't know, how fast did Central run in high school? What was he like in a mile? He was fat. Well, the, the, the difference yeah. is by the time Central made it to this sort of stage was 2011, and he was already the NCAA champion, and he had yeah. done rounds yeah. after NCAA rounds after yeah. rounds, and he had run dual meets. I think the 1500 is the hardest event to be a prodigy in because your race isn't just about you in the 1500. You can try to manage it, and you can try out all the cliches about just need to execute my race plan, but there's so much going on in a 1500 through the rounds and you need to react. It's not enough just to run your race. You need to be able to be flexible and you need to be able to draw on a little bit of experience to know, as you mentioned, when to move and when to sit back. So this is the toughest type of a race for a young person with no experience to wade into. And that's why I said a final would be success for Kessler. Just getting to the final yeah. would be success. I think getting to the second round is it still a great outcome. He got one extra round of experience than he would if he went out um, yesterday. But it's just, it's not like the 400. It's not like the the 100. It's not like, it's not even like the five or the 10 because that you can latch on and the moves that are made aren't as sudden. You can take time, you can take a deep breath and adapt. So Hobbs Kessler got thrown into the deep end here again, and he's going to be back 334. You can do a lot with 334 once you start getting in those rounds and getting in those mucky technical races, tactical races, excuse me. I just want to correct myself, Centro, as we showed on the screen during your talk, he wasn't a 410 miler in high school. He was a 403 mile. mile. There you go. He had an ex yeah. So he, he's, he's, he, might stare at you. he might stare at you like he stared at Cole Hawker the last 50. I love that. Uh, I think that, I mean, Central, first of all, looks great. And if we were talking, about this event a couple months ago after he ran the 150, we would have been like, uh, we don't know about Central, but he looked great. Uh, Hawker obviously looked strong because Hawker's looked strong all season. I like that they looked at each other dead in the eyes for a moment and then they started smiling, but there was a beat of just stone cold, I'm not tired, are you tired? Right. And then they Elon, show the broke. picture. And then we got the we got the we got the smile going across their faces. I saw someone comparing it to the Bolt and DeGrasse picture from the from the Olympics. But this was this is setting up to be an amazing final because they both look so good. Um, 
I guess there's a little bit of a rivalry going back to the your move central central Instagram caption. Although I don't think Cole Hawker just got brought into that. It was some kid on the Oregon team who tagged him, and then uh, Central's response had more to do with tear than it did with Hawker. I think he went out of his way to say Hawker he likes Hawker. So I don't know if this is just friendly rivalry or this is uh, something more than that. But it certainly added some uh, intrigue to a semifinal heat. So now it's time to explain the men's 1500 meter final and who would go if they finished top three. So Mm -hmm. as you know, you finish top three and you're in. But if you don't have the standard, you need to get into the world ranking. We know that Angles, Nagus, Chieti, Sancho, Thompson, and Wynn, they all have the standard. So they're top three, they're in. The question is, what about the other athletes? Sam Prakel, Cole Hawker, Eric Avila, Walid Suleiman, Kobe Alexander, and David Rubich. Those six athletes are going into this final without the standard. What would they need to run? Now, let me explain this graphic for you. If you're listening, oh, you may want to go wow. over to YouTube. It's a big graphic. I'm going to explain it. There are three situations. First, The first thing we need to talk about is we need to figure out if – the 45th best athlete in the world, what their ranking is, how many points they have. Now, I looked at the math. There's some national championships going on. Some movement might happen. The 45th time cutoff is going to be a person with a point ranking points of either 1,213, 1,209, or 1,202. 1,213 being the best, 1,202 being the worst. So, We don't know because we have to wait on the rest of the world to finish their races, but the 45th cutoff mark is going to be somewhere around 1,213 points to 1,202 points. And if you look at this, if the cutoff is at the extreme of like the best, 1,213, Mm -hmm. the six athletes, Avila, Suleiman, Alexander, Ribic, there's no ranking that they could get that's going to be good enough. They just have to run the standard to get in. So they won't Mm -hmm. be able to get in on world ranking because it's going to be too hard to get. But Hawker and Prakel, Prakel can get in no matter what he runs. He could get third place and run five minutes, and he'll get in because his ranking's high enough. But Cole Hawker, he's the one that's in a unique situation, and he also could be top three. In the worst-case scenario for him, he needs to run sub-342 and win, run sub-340 and get second, or run sub-340 low and get third. So, basically, he needs a 340 or faster race in order to ensure a top three finish gets him in on world ranking. The rest of the guys, they need, a, they need the standard, so they're not even involved. But you can kind of look at the situation on this graphic. If the cutoff is 1,213 points, he needs to be running in the 340 to 342 range. If it's 1,209 points, he needs to be running 341 to 343 range. And if it's 1,202 points, he could run any time and get it. So mm-hmm. Hawker's in a yeah. decent spot. You have to imagine yeah. we're going to see a 340-type time be top three. Mm-hmm. I don't think we're going to see a 350. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, I think of Villa Suleiman. We saw Heat go 342-9 tonight. We, just, we did. I wouldn't, well, I wouldn't take anything for granted in terms of speed of a 1,500 final. It could go th- – yeah, it could go anywhere. It could go 350. It could go 330. We just, we just don't know. But you – Yes, you like his odds over everybody else, but the big thing is first he has to get top three. And yes. it's going to be difficult enough just to get top three because these guys like Sharp. Angles, yeah, there was a tactical snafu there, putting himself on the rail there with 100 to go, but that seems par for the course with him, and he manages to thrive in that sort of chaos. Uh, Thompson closed really well. Obviously, we talked about Centro, Nagus. For those joining late, those are the people who don't have the standard. So there's another group that obviously yeah. has a standard, and all they need to do is finish top three because if this thing goes Centro, Nagus, and Josh Thompson, then Gordon's spreadsheet goes directly into the trash. Yeah. Here is – so we, we got the image here. Here is Craig Engels trying to squeeze his way through Ribich and Holt there. And he – I didn't see him touch anybody either, which when you look from this image, and maybe he brushed shoulders and I just couldn't see it. But there was – if there was any contact, it was minuscule. And you look at that picture, and it seems like the odds of him touching somebody are about 99%. And yet, Angles has, again, perfected the squeezing both shoulders together, running really fast, 
and slightly leaning sideways to avoid contact move. He it looks like he's trying. It looks like he's trying to get to the bar first. You know, he's like, "Ooh, happy hour. We gotta get there first because before the crowd gets in." I think he's and trying he's to like, get oh, out of the bar me, bathroom. Excuse me, excuse me. Trying to get get through the the crowd. Yeah, that's what it looks like. This is me at Costco trying to get to the get in line. <laughs> that's that's what I'm doing at Costco every every Sunday when it gets crowded. Any other men's fifteen hundred points that you want to make before we move on? No, it's gonna be good. Uh, I think it's gonna be one of the better fifteen hundred finals we've seen. Because obviously you have the vets, like an Angles and a Centro. Yeah. But the young guys in Nagus and Hawker just kind of yeah. add a little more flavor to that final that we normally we haven't seen in a, in a while, right? We haven't seen a Hawker slash Nagus talent in the, in the college scene since Centro was in college, I feel. I yeah. mean, has there been anyone straight out of college who's been as good as they've been? I don't think so. Since Centro? Yeah. No. No. Uh, no. Right? No. They, they've all been international guys. Yeah. Like a Josh Kerr right. type. Not, yeah. yeah. Not in the uh, US system. Um, here's the thing if you're a 1500 meter fan, I want you to enjoy this. I want you to take a deep breath and enjoy this because you're getting what you wanted at the beginning of the season. You could complain about, oh, it'd be great if you, know, you had Cooper Tier in there or. So, you know, somebody else was more in shape, whatever. But these guys have been through two rounds now. Like, you know Centro is fit. You know Cole Hawker is still fit. You know Engels is still fit. And look at the start list that you're going to have for the last day of competition. Centro, Thompson, Nagus, Hawker, Sietti, Engels, Wynn, Avila, Ribich, Praker, Prakel, Suleiman. You got everybody you wanted, right? You have the guy like Wynn who he said a couple months ago, don't sleep on him. He ran really fast at the Portland Track Festival. He's a great sleeper pick. But you have those, those guys that we've wanted to see. None of them went out in the final. All of them look to be in really good shape, and they're all going to converge for three spots on, on Sunday. And that does not happen all the time in track. So I want the 1,500-meter fans out there. I know you're a 5K fan this year, Gordon, so this is not to you. This is to the 1,500-meter fans out there. Enjoy it on Sunday because you got every That didn't happen in the women's 1,500. That did not happen in the women's 1500. It was still a great race, but that's pretty much the opposite of what happened in the women's 1500. The men, all the big players are there. Yep. Next event. 200 times. Dude, 200 we've, done, times. we've done some. We've done. We've done.